let's talk about blood so if you're an acupuncturist then all you are ever really dealing with is chi and channels if you use moxa as well then you're warming the channels and, and effectively warming up the chi but this is important to understand acupuncture only works on chi and channels any effect on blood is secondary to this so in other words if you can nourish and tonify the spleen and allow it to do its job better then it will enable better quality blood to be created however the effect for instance of using the point spleen 3 only affects chi however we need to understand what blood is in order to help the body heal itself and also to understand some of the pathologies of blood and blood consists of many different ingredients in effect but the most important one of all is the humble red blood cell now the red blood cell is recognized by most people as the characteristic biconcave disc and the reason for this disc is that it maximizes the surface area to volume ratio in fact what is less appreciated about this shape is that it is highly deformable in other words the shape itself changes when the red cells are squeezed down narrow capillaries so approximately the size of a red cell is about five to eight microns and the smallest capillaries in the body are actually a bit smaller than this so this is what happens the red cell approaches the capillary and as it does so its shape changes until it becomes like a parachute or possibly like a bullet and squeezes through now this obviously maximizes the amount of surface area that's in contact with the capillary walls and then maximizes the amount of oxygen for instance that can be transferred if we look at the structure of a red cell the first thing that strikes us is that it has no nucleus so a red cell does start with a nucleus this is known as a particular site but the nucleus is for some reason removed this is actually quite important when it comes to our ability to regenerate because less primitive animals do have nucleated red cells and they are also able to regenerate for instance limbs uh, this is a, a function of the red cells that allows it to do this but because our red cells have no nucleus our regenerative ability is less powerful now the most important ingredient within a red cell is the haemoglobin and haemoglobin attracts oxygen to it and then discharges oxygen when there is a lower pressure of oxygen outside as a result the red cell can carry oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of the body finally on the outside the membrane of the red cell is composed of a triangulated mesh and this triangulated mesh is able to deform very very easily and so the red cell can squeeze into tight spots what happens in old age and also with uh, various diseases for instance in diabetes is this mesh can become brittle and hard and as a result of that the red cell is less able to deform now the process of this mesh becoming brittle and hard is an example of phlegm and dampness within the body and that for instance is why diabetes causes this now a couple of examples of diseases can help illustrate what happens when red cells go wrong and why we for instance need to help this process along so malaria and sickle cell are like the yin and yang of diseases malaria is a disease that's caused by a parasite called plasmodium which gets into the body infects the liver and then gets into the red cells where it reproduces in a way the malaria parasite kind of hides within the red cells and it's not able to be attacked by the immune system whilst it's within the red cells now the organ within the body that's responsible for removing defective red cells and infected red cells is the spleen and the reason for that is the spleen has very narrow gaps that the red cells have to squeeze through and when red cells become brittle they cannot get through these gaps what is now being understood is that the plasmodium parasite actually deliberately makes the outside of the red cell both brittle and sticky and so the red cells get stuck elsewhere within the circulation before they can get taken out by the spleen 
There, stuck within the capillaries, the plasmodium parasite has time to reproduce and then finally bursts out of the red cell and the cycle of reinfection continues. And this is one reason why you have cycles of fever within malarial infection. So this is a very obvious and extreme example of stagnant blood and it's stagnant blood created by phlegm. Now in this case the phlegm is a pernicious uh, living form of phlegm, the plasmodium parasite, but the plasmodium deliberately has created these molecules which then stick to the membrane and cause the membrane to become both brittle and sticky to the capillaries. So the plasmodium parasite has created phlegm within the body and that phlegm then causes blood stagnation. Another example of blood stagnation is the body's answer to malaria, well, especially in the African continent, and that is the sickle cell disease. So sickle cell occurs in both a homozygous and a heterozygous state. In other words, the sickle cell gene is recessive, and so if you receive just one of the genes from one parent, then you will have a resistance to malaria. If you get both of the genes, you will end up with the sickle cell disease. What the sickle cell gene actually does is prevent the malarial parasite from creating this same stickiness within the red cell that allows the red cells to then get stuck in capillaries before they can be filtered out by the spleen. Now the spleen is full of immune cells so the body can deal with the plasmodium parasite if it is given an opportunity but the plasmodium parasite clearly deliberately hides away within the body so that the spleen is unable to filter it out. When there are both copies of the gene then the inside of the cell and the cell membrane become unstable and under stress this can be low oxygen or other phlegmy like conditions for instance infection the red cell just spontaneously deforms and causes a characteristic sickle cell shape. This then becomes stuck in the capillaries because as we remember the capillaries are incredibly tight spaces for the red cells to move down so they can easily become stuck within this. When they're stuck they cause blood stagnation and this is why the pain of sickle cell anemia is so severe. Blood stagnation causes more severe pain than cheese stagnation. So this process of blood becoming stuck is much more insidious than just these two examples. Any condition that causes the red cells to become more brittle, to become more sticky, will also cause a degree of blood stagnation. And the principal organ within the body for removing this dampness and phlegm and also defective red cells is the spleen. And this is why spleen deficiency and spleen problems tend to create a sallow complexion because the blood simply isn't moving within the microcirculation of our body well enough and as a result you get a very pale and slightly yellow sickly complexion.